and welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this is a Corgi Juniors Ford GT70. It was number 10B in the range and perhaps in retrospect a bit of an odd choice for a mainstream 1 in 64 scale diecast. It came in a light metallic green but early examples were bright orange. The green variety were part of the Growlers range which made an engine like noise as they rolled along. Here's a fresher orange example. And this is the fabled GT70 by Ford. The GC70 was designed from the ground up in 1970 as a purpose built rally car. It was to compete with the successful Porsche 911 and Alpine A110 in the World Rally Championship. Legendary designer Ercole Spada from the Zagato Design House, responsible for the Aston Martin DB4 GT Zagato, joined forces with Len Bailey from the GT40 program. Additionally, it was designed to use a range of engines. The first fitted were the 2.6 litre V6 Cologne units. However, these were later replaced by 1.6 litre Cosworth straight fours as it gave the car too high a centre of gravity. It also left a cramped cockpit. In order to save weight, the bodywork was made from fibreglass, but again, this spelt problems with the frame not being stiff enough. The GT70's main issue was that Bailey had designed the car too low for rallying, with only 6 inches of ground clearance. Despite numerous problems in development, an initial 6 prototypes were granted and it was unveiled in Brussels in January 1971. Ford claimed 500 would be built to secure Group 3 homologation. It quickly became apparent hard rallying would be difficult to sustain, not only due to the cramped cockpit, but the poor serviceability of the engine bay. Its rally debut came in September 1971 in France, but predictably failed to finish after problems with its V6. Another chassis fared better in the French Rally Championship later in 1971 and 72, coloured in a bright yellow and green BP livery. The third prototype had its V6 swapped to the 1.6 litre Cosworth engine through 1972 and 73 in the French Tarmac Championships. The fourth GT70 prototype was used as a press car, and the fifth for race vehicle development. Meanwhile, the sixth car was fitted with a body designed by Gear and shown at the 1971 Turin Auto Show as the GT70 concept car. But by 1973, Ford pulled the plug on the GT70 program. It had failed to live up to the nameplate handed down by its bigger brother. Budgetary restrictions, the threat of impending fuel crises, the high homologation requirements, coupled with the rallying success of the cheaper Ford Escort RS1600, all spelt the end of the GT70 project. At least two of the GT70 prototypes exist today. One is in private ownership, while the other is in a French BP livery housed in the UK with Ford's Motorsport Heritage Collection. The relative obscurity of the GT70 makes this casting choice all the more an oddity. Though, in early 1971, the car was already a hit with rallying fans, as it was paraded going along to spectate on that year's Monte Carlo rally. By then, it had been a badly kept secret by Ford that a rally monster had been in the works for some time. Sadly, it would never live up to the expectations or the precedents set by the GT40. Now, with my example, I have chosen this to test out a method suggested by a couple of viewers to help fix or cover up the cracked window piece. There's a sizeable crack along the middle of the windscreen, and being a car with an interesting backstory, what better way to do it? The suggestion was to use Humbrol clear gloss varnish either by painting it on or dipping the whole piece into the liquid. I've seen this done on new model aircraft canopies, and similar new plastic pieces, but not for this purpose. This is the Humbrol Clear I'll be using. It reads, Humbrol Clear is a water-soluble, self-leveling medium in either gloss, matte or satin finish that can be used to prepare painted surfaces for decals as a varnish to improve the appearance of clear parts. So, here goes, as I engulf the entire piece in gloss. I'm not sure if this is better painted on, but I'm always wary of streaky brush marks. After a moment in the solution, I take it out and leave it to dry in a dust-free environment overnight. 
And now here are all of the loose components that make up the Corgi GT70. I hook in the polished metal engine bay cover. This connects by a couple of cast slots just behind the side windows. Then comes my varnished and doubly polished window piece, which neatly slots in. The chrome plated interior seating and engine piece follows. And lastly, the polished base is positioned over the two rivet posts that hold everything in place. So this is how my Corgi Juniors Ford GT70 look to begin with. I chose this casting today, one as a test bed for a new method I'm trying out on the crack to the window piece, and two for its interesting backstory. It isn't the most exciting casting as is, but also doesn't provide much of a platform to go wild customising either. So it's an ideal test subject with a tale to tell. And this is how mine now looks. First up, let me know what you think about the humbrol clear on the window. The crack is still obviously evident, but do you think it is much less noticeable? I certainly think it has done a great job at making the glass pop better than just Auto Soul and Astonish alone. But whether it has made the all important difference to the crack, I'm not so sure. Do leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Meanwhile, I've attended to the dull metal work of the base and the rear engine cover with some Auto Soul polish, refreshed the wheels with Citadel Null Noil and Chrome Pen and repainted it in a fresh new coat of TS12 orange. I'll certainly give the Humbrol Clear a go on future castings, since I have it at least, so keep an eye out for it on those builds. But for now, that is all. Thanks so much for watching, please like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>